Hey everybody, Ryan here at E-Trailer. Today on our 2021 Grand Design Imagine Travel Trailer, we're gonna be showing you how to install the Fastway E2 weight distribution with two-point sway control. Before we get into that though, let's just take a couple of minutes, check this out and make sure it's gonna work for you. It seems like a lot of people uh, start to get interested in and weight distribution and sway control systems because they've lived life without it. You know, you get a truck and a trailer and you're excited, get hooked up, trucks squatting down like this, campers squatting down in the front, um, and it just doesn't pull that great, you know? It's not ideal, uh, a lot of negative effects pulling a trailer like that, and especially on a camper or something like this, you get a lot of uh, sway. You know, you catch wind or hit bumps and it kind of starts to get all over the place on you. And so a system like this is going to help correct all those issues. The way this is gonna work, so when you're hooked up without weight distribution, right, the truck is squatting down in the back. And what that's doing, there's so much weight back here, it's putting unnecessary wear and tear on your suspension components, you know, working it that much harder. Um, ideally, you don't wanna pull a trailer like that. It's not a, a great driving experience. And when all that happens too, with the back squatting down on the truck, it's gonna raise the front of it up, right? You'll have, um, you know, less than ideal braking, um, steering, just how, you know, the, the road feels, your headlights will be pointed up a little bit, and it's not right, you know, you want everything to be level or as level as possible, so to speak. On the trailer side, when the tongue, you know, the front of it's leaning down this way, what that's gonna do is put more weight on the front axle of the trailer, and again, it's gonna not pull like you'd want it to, and it's gonna wear out the tires faster and everything else like that. So a bunch of negative stuff comes from having your setup like that. Well, with the weight distribution, what's gonna happen is it has a connection point back here further on the trailer. So when you hook everything up, it's going to evenly distribute that weight across everything, right? Or across the axles. Um, and that's gonna keep the truck level as well as the camper and pull like you'd expect it to. This is also gonna have that built-in sway control, which to me, if you're gonna be doing a weight distribution system and setting it up, it'd be silly not to take advantage of the sway control too, because there's really not a whole lot more to it at all. And it's, you get a ton of benefits. So on the bottom of this and these brackets, there's some friction material and there's tension on these bars, you know? And so what happens is if the trailer starts to sway and get away from you, these bars are gonna create an opposite reaction and apply that, you know, all that friction there. And what that's gonna do is keep the trailer true and square behind your vehicle. So, or at least, um, you know, greatly increase that. So those days where, you know, maybe a tractor trailer passes you up and you'd get that drift, this is really going to help eliminate that. Same thing for windy days. Um, and even just in general, you know, some, some trailers just are kind of bouncy you know, and all over the place, to be honest with you, no matter which way you load them. And with a setup like this, it's going to greatly reduce that sway and keep it a lot more manageable. One of the things I do like about this setup compared to some of the other ones is how easy it's gonna be to actually kind of set up whenever you're hooking up uh, to your vehicle and there's really not a whole lot to it. You know, once you have the installation done and everything's set where it needs to be, essentially you just hook up to the vehicle, lift the front of the trailer up, these bars will swing into place and you lock them in and, and you're done. You know, there's no chains you have to mess with, counting links or adjusting cams or doing all this other type of thing. You know, it's about as, about as simple as it can get, to be honest with you. Uh, depending on your setup and how you have things uh, adjusted, sometimes the bars can be uh, a little scary, I guess you could say. Not so much when you're putting them on, because they'll pop over and sit on these brackets, but when you go to pull them off, a lot of times there can be some tension there and kind of get hung up. So when you're doing that, just, you know, go slow, uh, take your time and be careful. There are a handful of different kits that are essentially identical to this. Really, the diff, one of the big differences being what they're rated for. So we have the 10,000 pound uh, gross trailer weight rated uh, set up here today with 1,000 pounds of tongue weight. But 
you can go from 6,000 pound trailer weight to 600 pound tongue weight all the way up to 1,200 tongue weight and 12,000. So, you know, and, and just about everything in between. So, you know, check your trailer out and figure out what kit you need. Uh, personally, you know, if you're right there on the edge of one of them, I always recommend just to kind of go one step up because I'd rather have a little more than enough than, than the other way around. And there's also going to be different um, hitch heads available too. So this part, depending on what, you know, rise or drop that you're going to need, where your vehicle is going to sit. In our case, we have the seven inch rise, one inch drop uh, deal here. It worked out real well for our F-150, but everyone's going to be a little different. So one of the things you, you can do to kind of get you in, in, in a ballpark, if you need to know what one to get, is get the trailer on level ground. Uh, make sure the front of the frame and the back of the frame is parallel level, the measurements are the same. And then you can measure your coupler height, so from here down to the ground, and that's going to help you determine what size rise or drop you might need, you know. So let's just say for, um, for ease of math, let's just say if our truck's hitch pin hole was 10 inches to the ground and this, the, the trailer was 17 inches level, you know that seven inch uh, rise would be sufficient, maybe uh, even a little bit less than that because you can take into account your ball as well. So um, if you're unsure, that's one thing you can do to quickly check and at least get you in the get you in the ballpark. Something that is really nice about this type of system too that a lot of people really don't think about until it's too late is the fact that you can back up or reverse your whole rig with this still hooked up. Um, you don't have to, to do anything different there. Um, and that's not always the case with some of these types. You know, the chain style ones here, you're not able to actually reverse uh, with everything connected. So huge pain, you know, if you're trying to back in, it, you know, it, it, it's so much easier just to back in and not have to get out and unhook anything. Um, this system's also gonna be compatible with surge brake style actuators. So probably not super common in most scenarios, but you know, if you find yourself with that style of actuator, uh, this will be compatible with it. But other than that, at the end of the day, I mean, a, a fantastic system, really. It's super simple, not a lot of moving parts, um, and it's gonna make your towing experience that much, that much better and that much more predictable. As far as getting this installed goes, it's really not too bad. Um, everyone's setup will probably be a little bit different. Uh, really, the most important part is making sure you have all your measurements proper. Uh, that way you can get everything set up right. That's probably the most time consuming part. If you have to make adjustments, you know, you get everything together, you have to make adjustments, you have to kind of take stuff apart, make it, set it all back up and, and kind of go from there. So uh, we got really lucky today with ours, uh, kind of just the generic measurements and, and we are spot on. So like I said, that usually doesn't happen. So be prepared to have to tinker on it a little bit. Might take you a little time, but shouldn't run into too many issues. With that said though, why don't we go ahead and get started on it now. So you begin your installation, you wanna have your truck and trailer on as level ground as you can get, uh, kinda like we're set up here. And pull your truck forward, give yourself a little bit of working room. And I wanna mention when you're doing this, you wanna make sure to have your trailer loaded uh, as you would when you're towing it. Um, so keep that in mind. And if your vehicle has air springs on it, you wanna inflate those to the pressure that you think you're gonna be towing with. That way we have everything dialed in as close as possible while we make, uh, while we set everything up and make our adjustments. What you wanna do now is make sure that your trailer is level. So what I mean by that, here at the front, measure from the bottom of the frame rail down to the ground, and then do that at the very back of the trailer too. And you want the measurements to be the same or as close as possible. So if you need to lower, you know, lower your jack down some to change a measurement, you can do that, or you can always raise it up to find that sweet spot. Now you can install the hitch ball into uh, the main body here. So hitch ball doesn't come with it. You have to grab it separately. Um, uh, just make sure that you're using the right length and right diameter. Um, and you want to install this and torque it down. So this uses an extremely high torque rating. So if you don't have the proper tools, probably not a bad idea to pop into your local auto shop and see if they can torque this down for you. I'm sure they'd be more than happy to. 
What you need to do now is measure from the top of your coupler down to the ground and you can record that measurement in your instructions. And it's important to know this because this is going to help us determine where we actually need to set up the ball on our truck side. You can now take the shank, slide that into your hitch, pop the pin and clip in there, and then this will get bolted to the shank. And you want to position this in a way to where, you know, the ball measurement is going to be as close as possible to that coupler measurement. So in our case, it'll be all the way up top. We can take these big bolts, conical tooth washer, make sure teeth on the washer are going to face this way. So we'll slide that through. Same thing on the bottom. And then on the other side, we're just going to have that same washers and a nylon lock nut. Now that we know we're in that acceptable range there, we're just going to take this top bolt out, let that kind of swing down a little bit more. And then you can take six of these spacer washers. That's what we're starting with at least. That's what they recommend. I like to just use some packing tape to tape them together to make it more manageable. And then you take this uh, rivet or this pen, put that through. There's a hole, the first hole at the, in the inside of this head here. This is just going to slide in, sit in there like that. And what we'll do, sometimes this can be tricky to kind of keep everything steady here. Push that up. And we'll put this back through. And while, while we have some pressure on it there, you want to snug these bolts down. And I'm using a uh, inch and sixteenths size socket and an adjustable wrench. Right here, there's gonna be an angle set bolt and you can run this down by hand until it touches. And then come back with a 15 16 and give it an additional half a turn. Moving to the trailer side. Uh, you need to take a measurement on each side of the frame up front here. So we'll go from the center of the coupler, back 30 inches and make a mark. mark. So do that on each side and how we're going to mount up some of our brackets is going to uh, be determined by what type of coupler we have. The majority of them on the road are going to be like this where it sits on top, but if yours sits on the bottom, you know, what we're getting ready to do will be a little bit different from how yours is going to be set up. So just keep that in mind. You can grab these brackets. So one of them will be flat. The other one will have these studs coming off of it. On the top holes there, just want to take a half inch bolt put it through this one first and slide the back on. Take a split lock washer and a nut. Just put a thread or two on it and then we can set this on our frame. So this is how it'll get set on the frame and I'm gonna center it on our line. Looks pretty good like that. And then you can take another bolt and put it through the bottom closest to the frame. If you got wires or anything here, be sure you're not gonna pinch them. Move them out of the way. And then on the back side of that bolt we just put in, we're gonna do a split lock washer and a nut. Tighten and torque the hardware. So three quarter inch socket and wrench. And when you're doing this, try to do it evenly to kind of draw them brackets together. I'll do a couple of turns on the bottom and top, kind of rotating them. And then once it's snug, make sure it's still set up how we want, which it is. 
we'll come back with a torque wrench and tighten the bolts down to the amount specified in the instructions. You can go ahead and grab this bracket and this is gonna slide over these studs. So for now, we're gonna leave two holes at the top and two holes at the bottom showing. So we'll kind of just put it in the middle and we might have to adjust this later on. It's hard to say right now. We'll take the nylon lock nuts and we're just going to tighten them. We're not gonna to torque them at the moment because if we need to adjust it, we'll have to redo it. So if we don't, not a big deal. Well, we can always come back at the end and make sure these are torqued. With the one side set up, you're simply just gonna repeat that same process over on the other side of your camper. I could take the spring bars, all right, and get these put into the hitch head. So I did this side already. Really simple though. You're gonna have it set up like this. There's these uh, little tabs up here that you can pull up on. But so that is going to kind of drop in, rotate it in place, let the tab go, and let it set like that. So now what I'm gonna do, I'm a little far away. I'm gonna back the truck up closer to the camper as if we were getting ready to uh, get hooked up. You are gonna to need to take a handful of measurements. That way we can get our weight distribution set up properly. So the first one that you wanna take is one at the front of your truck. So you don't wanna be hooked up to the camper, trailer, nothing like that. So this is essentially just kind of a factory, factory ride height, if you will. So you wanna measure from the bottom of the wheel well here down to the ground and go ahead and record that in your instruction manual. Now you want to actually hook up to your trailer but you want to do this in a way where you're not going to be using the weight distribution. So you don't want your bars attached or anything like that. Just simply lower the coupler down onto the ball mount. So when you lower this down, you want to get full weight on it. You know, you don't want the, the jack here to be supporting any weight at all. Um, and once you have it like this, you can go back up to the front and record that same measurement. You can take those two measurements that you just took add them together, divide by two, and that's gonna give you kind of the baseline number that you can shoot for whenever we're setting up the weight distribution. You can lower your jack, you know, make sure the trailer's coupled to the ball mount, and we're gonna raise this up until our arms are really close and we can slide them over these brackets here. If your jack starts to run out of steam or um, if you, you know, run out of length there and these are really close, you can always use the tool that they give you to help get these uh, bars in place. You do the same thing for the other side. Make sure that you take the pens and clips and put it around the spring bars on, on each side. And you want to make sure that you have at least three inches from the end of the bar to the center of our bracket, which uh, we definitely do. Um, if you don't, you know, you can always maneuver these back and forth a little bit um, within the recommendations of the instructions to achieve that. So if you're past, or I'm sorry, uh, you know, if you don't have three inches, you're going to need to make an adjustment. But with that said, uh, we got both of our spring bars locked in. We'll go ahead, let the trailer down and get all the weight onto the back of our truck. Once you have all the weight, uh, you know, on the hitch, you need to go back up to the front, take that same measurement. And what you're looking for is to be as close as possible to that original measurement that we took uh, when we had no weight or the trailer not hooked up to the truck at all. I took our measurements and we got super lucky. This barely ever happens. The, what we were looking for was right on uh, with our weight distribution hooked up. The measurement was literally the exact same as it was when the truck was uncoupled. So like I said, we got really lucky. That probably won't happen all the time, at least from my experience, and you might have to make some adjustments. So we don't have to make any, but it's, it's pretty simple um, if you are under adjusted meaning that the, you know, the front of the truck is sitting up too high still and you need to bring that front end back down. There's a couple things you can do. Preferably, 
you remember those washers that we put in here? You can add a couple of them to correct that, you know, one or two. Of course, you'd have to take this apart here and, and put them in there and hook it all back up and, and check it again. So that's where usually we start. Um, but if that doesn't accomplish it, you can always raise these brackets up too, you know, so you could bump it up a hole and put it back together and, and go from there. On the same note, if you're over adjusted, meaning that the front of the truck is kind of buried, you know, pointing towards the ground and you need to actually bring the front of the truck back up, uh, you can remove a couple of washers. Again, that's where I usually like to start or um, actually lower the brackets and go from there. So pretty simple. It's kind of time consuming having to lower everything, take it apart, you know, add a washer, take one out and do it all again. But this is a pretty critical step. You want to make sure that you're set up properly. That way the weight distribution can actually do its job. Once the truck is for the most part set up, you want to come back and measure the trailer again, you know, from the bottom of the frame rail here at the front to the ground and to the back. And what you're looking for are those measurements to be within an inch and a quarter uh, of each other, which ours happens to be. It's about seven eighths of an inch. So we're, we're good. We fall right in that category where we don't really need to do anything. If yours exceeds that inch and a quarter, um, then we're going to have to make an adjustment to the hitch ball. If the measurement you have is higher at the front of the trailer than it is the back, then what you need to do is move the hitch head down one pinhole and put it back together, check it and go from there. That should correct it. If the front measurement is lower uh, than the back, then you can raise the hitch head a pinhole. And again, that should correct it. Once all your adjustments are proper, we can come back and tighten and torque everything down. So the first one, that angle set bolt that's down here, that'll actually have loosened up because, you know, once you got weight on it, it kind of changed the angle. So with this, you want to just tighten it up by hand and take your 15 16 and give it an extra quarter turn. What you wanna be sure to do now is come back and torque down all the remaining hardware to the specifications and the instructions. And then while I had it uh, unhooked here, I took out our bars and applied some grease to the ends as well as inside of here, just to help keep everything properly lubricated. At this point, you can get all hooked up, get everything connected, and I would suggest going out and, and taking everything for a spin, see how it feels. You know, I will say uh, during the break-in period for a short while, a little bit of noise back here is normal for these kind of seating and, and uh, uh, breaking in. But if you hear anything excessive or if you know the truck feels like it's floaty or, or anything kind of out of place, um, it's usually a pretty simple fix. You can, there's a, a diagram and instructions. It, it's really good, kind of directs you if you run into an issue, what you need to change. It might be as simple as rearranging the uh, load inside of your trailer or something like that. So um, that would be my recommendation and make sure everything's working correctly. And that'll finish up our look at and our installation of the Fastway E2 weight distribution with two point sway control on our 2021 Grand Design Imagine Travel Trailer.